views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome to another episode of Meetings of the Minds in partnership with BronxNet Television. As you all know, we had to create these segments in order to keep our members, our affiliates, and partners aware of the resources that are out there to help one another grow to get to the next level. On today's segments, we will be touching on Fordham University Scholarship and its cybersecurity program. We have with us today Dr. Tair Hajanet, the founder and director of Fordham Center for Cybersecurity. Hello, Dr. Tair. How are you and how is the family? Oh, thank you. It's, uh, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, thank God we're all doing well. Uh, a little bit bored from being uh, kind of locked down and working all from home, but we are all blessed to be healthy and uh, doing well. Thank you, Dan. Thank goodness. Uh, you know what, Dr. Tair, I've met you on a number of occasions, but you know, I never really heard your story on how you founded the cybersecurity program at Fordham University. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, it's kind of a long journey where I started my career in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And in some sense, it follows what makes someone a cybersecurity expert. It has the three elements, which are the education, uh, being involved with a hands-on and practical experience. And most importantly in the field of cybersecurity is the research and analytics component because it's a field of new things, new surprises every now, every now and then. Uh, cybersecurity experts has to be prepared for that. You can't just teach them the basics and uh, you know common steps to follow and they just follow them. You have to prepare them for uh, the surprises and the future. So um, I had my education initially in uh, electrical and computer engineering, and then a master's degree that focused on electrical and computer engineering uh, with uh, fiber optics communications and secure communication. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my first job was in a research and development center, mainly focused on how to secure communication, both wired and wireless communication over networks. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed that I want more of that cybersecurity. I can't just uh, keep educating myself for reading. So uh, I went to University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania and I did my graduate study, master's and PhD with a concentration on cybersecurity specifically. And since then, about 12 years now, uh, I've been involved purely in cybersecurity education, research, and program development. Mm -hmm. uh, five years ago, I joined Fordham University and well, that was one of the most important steps in my career, honestly. Uh, I received tremendous support from the administrative at Fordham University, starting from uh, our president, Father Joseph McShane and his office. Uh, they are very supportive uh, of, of cybersecurity. They have started um, a great conference jointly with, uh, with the FBI and other agencies in cybersecurity called the International Conference on Cybersecurity. Uh, so th there was some kind of foundation I found at Fordham. And from there, we built a program uh, that I would uh, honestly think of it as a very successful program. I measured that success by what our graduates now are doing, uh, how great they are doing in their careers, and the reflect that we had on the cybersecurity uh, domestically and internationally. Yeah, uh, no, it's so interesting how everything you've mentioned just literally came full circle. And I think it's probably always been a part of you to give back. And now you're giving back in such a huge way by opening up these opportunities, right? And one of the conversations that we've had is how do we become more inclusive and make sure that these opportunities are given to communities of colors, the Latino uh, community, and you are being very deliberate about that. What has been the division that you gather from your experience on why these opportunities had not initially been uh, given to our communities? That's a great uh, question. So 
Um, uh, first of all, Fordham as a university uh, is all about building a university for all of us. It's in the core of their mission as a Jesuit and Catholic university uh, to have diversity as a counterstorm in their mission for uh, education, research, and scholarship. And the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences uh, has followed that and they're very supportive for inclusion and they supported this scholarship uh, for uh, the Hispanic chapter. And we have other also uh, support for uh, diversity and inclusion. Uh, Dr. Taylor Stovall, the Dean of that school is very supportive and he continued to support that uh, mission as well. And uh, in fact, currently Fordham has, uh, or recently has received a $3 million grant from uh, the Department of Defense and National Security uh, Agency to be the lead institution. Uh, myself and uh, I'm the co-lead of that, um, that initiative or that grant. The grant is all about SEDI. SEDI uh, is a short for cybersecurity diversity, uh, cybersecurity inclusive diversity and education. And it's a $3 million grant, as I mentioned. Uh, the goal of it is to gather together a group of partners, which are leader universities in cybersecurity, with a mission to improve cybersecurity education programs at minority serving institutions. More specifically, HSIs, has uh, Hispanic serving institutions, uh, HS HSBCUs, uh, historically black colleges and universities, among other minority serving institutions. Our goal is to bring those universities and improve their cybersecurity program or create a new cybersecurity uh, programs by uh, providing them with support for, for their faculty, for their students, for their curriculum, for their programs, uh, in every aspect you would think uh, of it in cybersecurity. Uh, our goal really is not only to give them that kind of curriculum and uh, have it for their students, but also to uh, help them prov uh, provide a curriculum that will build on the hands-on, will follow the same competency-based learning education model that we have at Fordham and other successful universities so that their graduates will not feel the gap or a shortage once they graduate with a degree in cybersecurity, where they will be able to compete and get the same uh, job quality that other students would receive. It's all about having access to resources, yeah. having access to uh, top-notch curriculum and faculty as well. So we support all these kind of uh, activity and Fordham University is very supportive uh, in that uh, effort. Yeah, can I also uh, just say here at the New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, we don't just call anyone an ally. And since we have met you, you have proven to be invested in our community and providing the resources uh, that you have and opening up doors. And we appreciate you for that. I, I want to know, you know, why the partnership with the New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce? And you spoke a little bit. Uh, about that, right? So if you can just speak a little more. And also, what are the requirements for the scholarship? Uh, we do have it up on our website, by the way, but if um, you can speak a little Absolutely. bit more to that. Absolutely. So first of all, I mean, you are in New York uh, City and Fordham is all about giving back to its own community. So we consider you as a family and community uh, when it comes uh, to, to Fordham. And uh, this is something we're trying to do in our program, more inclusive, and more diverse body uh, of students, um, including, I would say, the educational background, because we noticed that's a challenge for students uh, coming from um, minority, uh, I would say, background. Uh, it's, it has been always math, computer programming. It's a challenge for them, and that's uh, nothing to be, uh, I mean, shy of. Um, but the great thing is that cybersecurity is becoming a more of a diverse field itself. It's no longer that uh, field under the computer science where it's all about math and programming. You could be a cybersecurity expert without even the ability to write a single code or to solve a partial differential equation. You don't have to, to have that deep knowledge in programming or in cybersecurity. It's, it's a very diverse for, uh, field, as I mentioned. You could focus on different aspects of or soft side of cybersecurity, including the cybersecurity management, the policy, the intelligence of cybersecurity. So that really helped us to include uh, a diverse body of students, both in terms of uh, diverse based on their background or diverse based on their educational uh, 
uh, background. So when we started uh, this scholarship, our goal really was to support uh, students that have less access to resources and less chances to compete with other students that could receive a scholarship. So we dedicated a scholarship exclusively uh, for uh, students that are nominated by uh, you guys from the chamber. And uh, the requirements uh, there is a basic requirements. We try not to make them uh, tough. It, it, it's, it, they only need to meet kind of the basic requirements of any kind of admission uh, criteria, uh, a GPA that's uh, above 3.0, for example, uh, a background, we are very flexible in that. Uh, it could be technical, non-technical, less technical in political science and in computer and in, uh, information management and in data management in any kind of uh, background that related or even far related to cybersecurity field. But again, when we say cybersecurity, it's a broad uh, definition of cyber uh, security. We waived some of the requirements just at the GRE. We found out that it could be challenging for some of the students we would still encourage that and uh, other than that it's a uh, uh, it's a simple application honestly i mean they come uh, through you guys they're nominated and they meet those minimum criteria mm -hmm. and then they go through uh, the same admission process that uh, we have at fordham and we finally support uh, their uh, application and tuition so this scho the scholarship is uh, is about $41,372 uh, worth of uh, scholarship, and it supports them for two years. Yeah. And um, without a doubt, I mean, we're certain that those students, most importantly, when they graduate, they will be able to secure key jobs in cybersecurity workforce, both even in the private or in the uh, public sector uh, as well. Just like 99, if not 100% of all our uh, graduates over the past three to five years. I mean, and those are incredible stats. This is a golden opportunity for our community. We want to encourage each and every one of you to please share this video. Uh, it really talks about transferable skills. So you don't have to major in cybersecurity, you know, to get a master's in it. And we are working with an accredited, uh, pretty much Ivy League school to make these opportunities available for our communities. I mean, why not? Dr. Tair, thank you so much for believing in us and for trusting the New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce to be able to provide uh, these uh, resources for our communities as well. Uh, we wish you well. I'm so excited to be working with you once again, and we'll see you soon. Please tell the team we said hello. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was my pleasure to be with you. Thanks you a lot. Got you got it. You got it. You got it. And if you're not a member of the New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, it's super easy, www.hispanicchamber.nyc, www.hispanicchamber.nyc, and you will also get scholarship information on our website. You can also visit our LinkedIn page at New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Until next time, bendiciones.